The Luna Guardsman, written by Krimar. Chapter 3 Be Still My Heart. There are many ponies who claim that the citizens of Canterlot are obnoxious bastards, always looking down on every other city, town, and village around Equestria. They are the sort that walk on the clean, most prestigious, and classy streets of Manhattan, wearing the same expression on their face they would if they were standing on a landfill instead. They are offensive, loudmouthed, irritable, and nasty. Not all of them, of course, but enough to paint the condescending stereotype over all the ponies who make their home in the capital. But when the critics of these ponies make the trip to Canterlot and walk its perfectly paved streets, they stop to admire the arcing architecture. They feast at the expensive but absolutely outstanding restaurants and cafes that serve the best of all Equestria has to offer. Weep and laugh at the multitude of extraordinary plays and art exhibitions. Revel in the impeccable weather that surrounds the mighty city and gaze outwards into the majestic green view of the whole country that is offered by their standing place, high atop the Mount Counterlot. And at the end of the day, well, there's only one conclusion those ponies can reach. Those obnoxious bastards might be onto something here. You could spend your whole life living here with an unlimited budget and a completely responsibility-free schedule, something which many residents with zero self-insight would deny having, and never taste as much as half of the rich bounty Canterlot has to offer in its golden lunch trolley. There's a paradise, and it costs a thousand bits per day, minus residential expenses. Let's just ignore those little things. There's no need to distress ourselves so soon. Undoubtedly, even in this mecca of style, class, and finesse, and lots not so hidden secret pleasure dens, there is one temple that is the absolute pinnacle of perfection. To visit it is to know awe and astonishment. It is the deep ingrained belief that we will settle in your bones that you stood on the threshold of heaven. It is the realization that everything that claimed about Canterlot would be a load of musky horse apples that overstayed their welcome in the sun without this particular ode to the caretakers of the heavens. Girls, welcome to Canterlot Castle. Uh, thanks, Twilight, but we kind of been here before, you know. Rainbow Dash countered Twilight's warm welcome to her former abode, with a level of grace usually only possessed by rocks. Big, hard ones. I, I, I know, I just meant... Twilight stammered. Like, many more times than one. Rarity decided to take mercy on both of her friends and nip this at the bud. Rainbow, dear. Twilight was just trying to be courteous. Truly, for a mare so dedicated to distancing herself from any semblance of literacy, among other things, Rainbow would occasionally grip herself to the technicalities in casual conversation with a pathos usually reserved for the most fastidious grammar professors. She accepted Twilight's thankful grin with a smiling nod and endured Rainbow's groan with silence. They were moving down the main entrance hall. Large, lavish staircases, barred by rigid royal guards, led to the upper floors. High above them, Rarity noticed that the design depicting the Princess Celestia's cutie mark, bordered by the dawn and sunset, had been replaced with a fresh mural of a stylized Celestia and Luna rotating each other, both of them bathed by the light of their respective charge. Light, both natural and that of extravagant chandeliers, was blocked by a rim around the mural so it could shine with the magic that was imbued in it. Rarity's inner designer felt a burning desire to confirm her suspicion that come moonrise, the art would glow with a completely different radiance. Day and night together again, she thought appropriately. She considered, as Princess Luna should someday soon be put back on the forefront of ruling Equestria next to her sister, that Canterlot Castle slowly changed to accommodate both their graces in equal measure. She wondered how much more would change with the Lunar Diarch's rule apart from the decor. The question left her for a lesser day. Today, they had a meeting with THE Princess Celestia to attend. No matter how many times she would meet a ruler, Rarity always felt a thrill. The impeccable manners, the savoir faire, the luminous presence. True royalty was defined by her words and actions alone. Oh, she could just start giggling with anticipation like a school filly. Remember yourself, Rarity? She warned herself. She casually straightened her shoulders in case some pony was watching and discreetly inspected her friends. She was in head of their little procession, intermittently side by side with Pinkie Pie as the Pink Earth Pony hopped to admire her reflection on every polished surface and ask every pony they passed for their names. 
randomly returning to her place and share her experiences with the group. Some of them involving ponies and places they clearly never met or had been, Rarity paid enough attention to nod at the proper places and keep only the last sentence said in her memory. Usually, Stratagem is dealing with Pinkie Pie when she was like this was so simply not nod and smile. In fact, most of her interactions with Pinkie Pie involved nodding and smiling. Something she suspected that Candy Crazed Mare had figured out, considering the large number of occasions she found herself agreeing too late to assisting with party decorations and alligator gum brushing. Behind them fought Applejack and Rainbow Dash. It had been a long struggle, with many eardrums threatening to commit honorable suicide to escape the nagging and complaining that followed each other in an unending cycle. But she finally managed to get both of them to at least brush their manes and tails. Applejack was pretty compliant after only a bit of grumbling, mostly to keep up appearances as Rarity believed, and after a thorough brushing, along with some underhoof spraying of conditioner, her mane was sparkling like a golden field of mature wheat in the sun. Then came Rainbow Dash's turn, and by all that is left holy in this world, Rarity was ready to kill herself after 30 seconds. Come back to life as a zombie, plunge Equestria into an age of darkness, and drag the instrument of her torture back to Tartarus where she belonged. She knew about screeching, rares fur, and clawing. She had a cat and a little sister after all, but this was supposed to be a grown pony, not an amalgamation of high-pitched screams and thrashing. Every moment of the comb was torture both to her magic field that toiled to undo the myriad of wind-made hair knots and the poor, desolate sanity, Rainbow Dash claimed that she was horribly hurt by the Psycho Mare. But what did she know about pain? Try making your living working with hundreds of small, pointy needles in a shop where real Psycho Mares rush in daily basis, spreading the tiny harbingers of pain across every seemingly innocent surface, and then you can talk about pain. At the very least, all she had to do on was to stop Rainbow from tussling her mane, taking a fight, or appraising any open window that has to pull out a hairbrush and show it to her, followed with a hiss from Rarity's clenched teeth. Right between the two mares she had smartened up, huddled poor Twilight. Ever since they laid her hooves in Canterlot, Twilight's disposition swapped constantly between that of a young filly eager to show her friends the bedroom her parents had allowed her to paint wholly pink, concurrent anecdote not taken by her personal life, Please disregard anything Sweetie Belle says, or she has heard. And that has an even younger filly that was marching into the living room to let her parents know she burned down everything you ever loved. Again, disregard anything you might hear. Her precious whittle little Spikey was in the exact opposite. He was riding on top of Twilight's back, his head spinning from one side to an another only to swiftly pivot towards any sudden motion he caught at the edge of his eyes. Spike was obviously anxious as Twilight but she seemed to drag her body forward. She was almost trembling in agitation, urging Twilight to walk faster. Rarity prayed with all her heart that Prince's trust in her friend's surrogate father was not misplaced. She would not be able to bear watching Spike's heart shatter otherwise. Fluttershy was the last to follow in their group, as she always was, where Applejack and Rainbow formed a barrier for Twilight to hide behind for a feeling of safety. Fluttershy resolutely followed Twilight step by step, quietly encouraging her when she needed to keep her mind occupied with various questions she made up on the spot. While every pony seemed to be in just as much order as they could manage at this point, they approached the massive gold-plated doors that led to the fabled Sun Court that were situated at the end of the hall. She counted six of the renowned solo guards keeping watch in the front, their platinum-colored armor detailed with golden stylized sun rays announcing to all their hollowed position in the hierarchy. Rarity couldn't help but to spot the various blades they kept at her signs. Unlike the Royal Guard, the Solars were always equipped with, and had license to use, more weapons than a single classic spear. As they came near enough, a Solar Unicorn's horn briefly lit in casting of a short spell. Two of the guards moved to the sides of the group and the other four retaining their position. Rarity tried to catch Twilight's eye for a hint of what they were supposed to do now, but the worried mare was keeping her head down, eyes occasionally flicking to her left and right. The seconds were ticking, so Rarity decided to take the initiative. She delicately cleared her throat and her eyes calculatingly half-lidded to entice every stallion or mare in sight she addressed the unicorn stallion standing close to her. Good morning to you, fine gentle cults. I am Rarity, owner of the Carousel Boutique and bearer of the element of generosity. I and my fellow bearers of the element of harmony have been cordially invited. Please wait your turn in place, ma'am. My superior has been notified of your presence and will be here shortly. 
Ma'am. It was crystal clear that she was a miss. Oh, that old buck decided to cross horns with a wrong unicorn. She was just about to let loose a formal statement of her indignation, right in the ear hole that Stalin idiotically presented to her in her stillness, when one of the great doors opened enough to let another solar stallion out. Rarity felt her eyes swim in stars and wished she had decided to wear one of her new ensembles after all. The unicorn that came out of them was large, easily equal to that Applejack's handsome brother and solid muscles quivered under his white coat with every move. His long horn, oh my, rose majestically out of his coppery mane. His armor was the same as his fellow solars. Unlike them, a bronze replica of Celeste's cutie mark was sculpted to the front of his chest, and a long white gold-trimmed cape covered his back, tied on his neck with golden braids. His austere, gold eyes passed over them, and Rarity felt them connect with hers for a heart-shuddering moment. I welcome you to Cantalot Castle. I am Princess Celestia's commander of the solo god, Steadfast Ray. He said and smiled widely, his eyes beaming. Oh, was this destiny? Was it finally happening? A divine princess let me know you would arrive today. It is good to see you again, Miss Sparkle. Steadfast said, absently knocking Rarity aside as he made his way to front of Twilight. As Rarity was climbing up on her legs again, not aided by the unhelpful guards around her, she saw Twilight lock back into a serene look and return the commander's smile. It's good to see you too, Commander Steadfast. Princess Celestia invited us to your tournament, she told him. Ah, oh, yes. Her grace has mentioned this, he chuckled. <laughs> we were actually just conferring about the candidates. You wouldn't believe the amount of work that is needed to background on such an occasion. Martial proudness is only an aspect of what's needed at the Solar Guard and we need to make sure that only those truly worth it take on the mantle of the most holy of services to the crown. He turned and led them through a smaller side door, down a procession of twisting corridors, slowly making their way upwards. Patrolling royal guards saluted the solar commander as he passed, and maids and other personnel bowed their heads before him. Steadfast Ray coaxed Twilight to follow next to him. At the very least, him talking was keeping Twilight calm. It is disappointing to see that your brother has once again failed to apply for a position in our prestigious order. Soldiers of this cal caliber are talents exactly what we are looking for in our members. The girls all looked to each other, the same questioning burning on their lips. What brother? It seemed to Rarity that Twilight kept her family members a close secret. On second thought, she corrected herself, she probably hadn't figured it out yet this was some kind of thing her friend shared among them. Her inner gossip tried to voice her questions, but was expediently beaten and left tied in a corner by an alliance of her inner propriety, sense of timing, sensitivity, and eavesdropper. Uh... Twilight threw a short, apologetic look to her friends behind her. Shining's always seemed happy enough. With his current rank, he isn't doing bad for himself, considering... The eye-dropping stallion nodded. Cantalot's captain of the Royal Guard is nothing to sneer at, I give him that, but Rigdon has done Shining Armor a great disservice by stopping him from reaching his full potential. Steadfast smirked and Twilight's panicked eep. I am the Solar Commander, Miss Twilight. If I want to know something, then I will find out easy enough. This is far from Rigdon's greatest sin, but I am nothing if not persevering. Shining Armor will see the light one day and we will be waiting for him. Twilight nodded absently, seemingly awkward at the direction the conversation had taken. Spike also looked unhappy, frowning at the commander that had yet to acknowledge his presence. Canterlot Captain of the Royal Guard is certainly nothing to sneer at. Rarity knew this much at least. Equestria was split into six districts as far as the guard forces went. Each of them went under shared jurisdiction of three captains per territory. Twilight's brother, positioned as a Canterlot Captain, was the most illustrious opponent of rank he could get. The only ones that outrank him would be the various district commanders. Steadfast Ray seemed to honestly believe that Twilight's brother should give up that for a spot in the Solar Guard as their newest recruit. Having left a small distance between the Solar Commander, Applejack started whispering to Rainbow Dash. Is every Solar Guard like that? What do you mean? What I mean is, Applejack specified, is that guy hasn't even bothered with saying a simple hey or glance towards us. And the way he mentions Princess Celestia gives me the creeps. Their job is to be bad flanks, not nice. And trust me, he keeps his eyes on us. I've heard of this guy. He's the reason the Solar Guard had to double their recruiting tournaments in recent years. 
the moment one of them shows the slightest hint of in inattention and not being completely devoted, Rainbow Dash made sweeping gestures at her throat. He knocks them off their ranks, just like that. They followed the commander in silence after that, absently listening to him singing praises for either his guard or Celestia with every other sentence. Rarity had to ask, Why the creeps, Applejack? He has been less than courteous with the rest of us. She gnashed her teeth just an itty bit. But apart from that... Listen to him, Applejack said, nodding towards Steadfast. Hear how he talks about the princess and stuff? Applejack lowered her voice even more, forcing Rarity and Rainbow to bend their heads closer together. Granny told me about some stories once or twice, about some ponies who claimed the princess was a bona fide goddess. Now there's a lot of ponies who believe in some part at least, kind of hard not to with the whole move in the sun and whatnot, but some of those ponies she told me about were mad about it. There were a few in the old days. She said to me, that you would gather up in prayer together before the sunrise for Celestia to bless him. Many of them were just plain weird about it, doing those little rituals and stuff. Maybe that's how they learned it from their folk, but a few of them, ah, a few of them, all right. Some of them would take casual mention of Celestia's name as sin and turn violent to y'all sometimes. Others forced their kid to do crazy stuff trying to make him get a cutie mark that had to do with the day or sun so they'd be holy. Others... Others would take ritual stuff too far. They'd include ponies that were there to pray with him if, you know, you get my drift. She finished darkly. Rarity had known about ponies holding those beliefs. She even knew a few of them. But to go to such lengths, she felt a chill run up her spine. What was the world coming to? Fluttershy offered her own two bits in the conversation. I, I once heard about a mare that looked straight in the sun until she got blind. She said she wanted to burn out her sins. Applejack nodded. Yeah, well, that's the reason those characters never sat well with me. Too easy to get stringed along with bad choices, Granny says. If y'all go believe in a pony that claims to hear Celestia's voice coming from the sun. They stopped in front of what would be an unassuming door if it wasn't for the two solar commanders standing in the front. Commander Steadfast accepted the sharp salute with an interceptable nod. I will leave you here. I need to inspect the arena for tomorrow's fights. Her radiance waits for you inside, he said and retreated in a dignified trot. Rarity noticed Applejack watching him go with relief. They walked through the door. The guards opened for them and saw a spartan but elegant parlor, a large balcony with doors open at one side letting a refreshing breeze in. From her place sitting on the large, soft-looking cushion, showered in rays of sunshine, Rarity thought the sun would be too high up, but now it's to let its light straight into the room. Princess Celestia floated down her cup on the small table in front of her and smiled. Twilight, Spike, girls, would you like to have some tea with me? She said as they were all old friends who joined together daily. Rarity was a mare of dignity, so she only squealed eternally. There we go. The end of part one. This is right before we get to the nice, juicy bits, so I hope I didn't hold you too hard on that one. However, today is a special day. I'd like to thank my new Patreon, Chase Lee Master. Thank you for supporting my content despite my extremely small channel. I really do appreciate it. I also appreciate every and all support that you give to my videos. Whether it's a like, subscribe, or comment, it really does help a lot. This has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.